Well, good afternoon, good morning. Yes, good morning, folks. It's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to my bee yard in Southeast Louisiana. Now, it is August the 5th, and I am busy with treating and inspecting. I usually like to do my assessments a little sooner than this, but I really messed up with my vacation this year, pushing it so early. I'm, I'm really off track. But my assessments in the summer are one time, go in, see if they're queen right, and be done. Then I treat. I used to always treat with oxalic acid every five or six days, four or five treatments, and uh, that seemed to do good. Um, but it's a lot of work in the heat of August. Again, only go in one time to check. So, once they're queen right in the summer, I leave them alone. I don't touch them. Check for stores. I don't feed. Not against feeding, but I don't need to. I got these boxes are full of honey. It'll carry them through a dearth, no problem. We'll check weights in the fall and move on, but I rarely have to feed. I leave so much in the top deep, it's no problem. So, anyway, just gonna go through and inspect for queen right. If I see eggs, I'm done. I see larvae, I'm done. So, I told you last year I was gonna treat with strips this year so this year I was I was busy let me stand up reading in uh, you know Randy Oliver's testing with mite strips and things of that nature and he did a little something on hop guard well it just so happens I go in and find hop guard on sale and I did some reading on it but I haven't seen many people using hop guard 3 so, caught it on sale. Strips, as you know, are expensive. I decided, you know what? I read his study, his, his, not his, you know, his little bit of research in his yard, and it seemed to really pan out well uh, as far as a knockdown. Its efficacy wasn't the point of maybe Apovar, but it did a good knockdown, and here they were on sale, and I'm thinking, huh. The only scary thing about when you spend a few hundred bucks on treatments that you don't hear a lot of people using in your area is did you just waste a bunch of money you're gonna lose a bunch of bees you know i don't know but what i want to do is according to his stuff it seemed to knock them back pretty good unfortunately i won't be able to do it but once he did it twice at a seven or 14 day interval it seemed to be about the same both times and uh, he had good results i may have enough to do it twice on some of them because i do have some acre guard that craig branch sent me and i'm gonna try half doses on some of these columns i'm gonna be very careful so I'm inspecting right now. I want to get in a rhythm and try and use it first before I just got on the video and got this thing in my knee and all that stuff. So uh, Apigard was also uh, is, is, is touchy in this heat. This stuff is supposed to be not so bad in the heat. He said it was a great summer treatment, so that's why I'm trying it. But when you read the instructions, it wants you to take inner covers out, pull the screens, entrance reducers, worst time of year to do that. So anyway, these bees were not at all agitated until I fired up that camera, but now they are. So let's take a look, make sure we're queen right now. I'm gonna go ahead and sample. I don't, I'm not gonna sample a bunch, but what I'm gonna do is sample the ones I'm using the different treatments on to see what I've got um, as far as any kind of kill rate. I'm wearing nitro gloves, I'm not a fan. I don't like nitro gloves in this heat. A lot of people do. I don't care for them because they get slick. But this stuff, this Hop Guard 3, gets really slick and slippery. When you go to pull frames, it gets over everything. So I had to bring a, a, a paper towel out here. But yeah, they're getting feisty. I'm going to pull a sample off of this one. And uh, we'll check. It's, I'm, the mite loads are probably going to be super high. I don't treat in the spring usually. I planned to this year and I didn't. But I do want to say the good news is I told you I had six summer swarms. Five of those have requeened. This one here, requeen, gangbuster requeen. So got the treatments in that one. We're gonna get on this and I'll show you what I'm doing. You can see I treated that nuke. I vented it like they said and everything, but uh, that nuke is blowing up. I don't like that hot guard, but only one strip in there. I don't know that I'm gonna go back with them. I'm gonna check the efficacy in a week and just see, but um, I don't know if I'll have enough. And this hot guard, this stuff stinks. So I'm gonna give them some more smoke because they're, for whatever reason, they just got kind of irritable. It is getting ready to rain. I got eggs, so I'm done. What I do in my assessments, I check and get a note of stores. They're backfilling with nectar. There's plenty of honey, like six frames of honey. I check for eggs or a queen, and I'm done. When I look in this one, I see eggs. I'm done. I want a frame that's next to the brood nest with open and closed uh, sealed brood. That's a good thing. This is actually a good frame. 
So I'm going to look for the queen very carefully on this, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. All I need is 300 bees, and you can rub the cup down the frame. I've seen people do that. We just did that in Alabama. Um, that gets your nurse bees, or you can dump them in a tub. One time I dumped them in a tub, and I was able to see the queen in there. That was scary. So I triple check this thing for a queen, and I'll look. And so what I do is I shake them in this tub. You see people do this. And then I let the flying bees come out. Put the frame back. Basically, this is like Randy Oliver did. He said, let the flying bees come on out. Give them a little time. Then we take our half cup, which is approximately 300 bees. We got crawling bees. I double check for the queen. So she'll usually be trying to escape if, if she is in here. Now again, I'm not doing a how-to, guys. I'm doing a how I do. Y'all know that with me. I'm not telling you this is the way to do mice. I'm not telling you to even treat. I'm not telling you not to feed. I'm not telling you any of this stuff. Just telling you what I do and how I've done it and then what has worked for me so I don't see them a lot of the flying bees are gone I don't even know if I gotta gotta get a half a cup there we go gonna dump them in our easy test gonna shut the lid and we're gonna shake for a minute okay so it's at this point that my $20 mic gave way and we lost audio. So what I'm doing right here is just showing you that I'm shaking it in the circular motion, motion and I'm explaining to you what I'm using. And uh, this voiceover, it's not as easy to do as you would think, uh, trying to keep up with the video. But basically what I'm telling you is, I am using Dawn Ultra. It's a uh, one to two teaspoons to a gallon. I did uh, just shy of two teaspoons, I'm sorry, tablespoons to a gallon. And I'm mixing it all up. And I also read this in Randy Oliver's studies when he was trying the sweetest sponges and some of these same media strips that Hot Guard uses. So that's all I was explaining here. I'm getting ready to show you the mic count that I saw. But uh, yeah, using the Dawn Ultra, that cup leaked a little bit on me. And uh, we use Dawn Ultra. Uh, Greg Burns is big on Dawn Ultra and has tested it exclusively. And hey, it seems to pull a lot of the mites down a little better than a 90% alcohol. Okay, folks, only a little bit more voiceover to go this last segment. Um, so I'm opening the hive next door while the mites were shaking, and then I'm letting them sit uh, just to let everything release and get a good count. Um, just for your information, I already got a sneak peek, but I'll let you know in just a second as we go a little further. This is the colony next door. I'm not going to test this one. It's automatically going ahead and getting the hop guard 3. So what I'm doing first and foremost is smoking them down really quick, popping the box. I know I'm going to treat both both boxes because they're full of bees. Two strips um, for every 10 frames of bees, one, strip, one frame apart. So that's what I'm doing now. I think this box, though, it only had about five frames of bees in the top is what I'm seeing. And then um, the bottom one, of course, was loaded. So really this one should have got four, but I think I only put three in it, but we'll see in just a second. So... All I'm going to do really quick is pull some frames, see if I got eggs. I know the top box was just slam full of honey and, and only a few brood frames, so there's no reason to really go digging through it. I just want to look in the bottom since I needed to put strips in the bottom anyway. Once I see eggs, we're good. So that's all I'm doing right here is uh, checking for queen right. So there's my first frame in the bottom, a little patch of brood. They're all being capped. There's eggs and larvae uh, or milk brood beside that. So enough seen. We, no need to go any further. Time to put these slimy, nasty smelling strips in. Hopefully they work. And what these things are, are they are potassium salt of the hops beta acids is what I'm pretty sure is the ingredient, the active ingredient. Um... I think that's the correct order you say it in. So you put one strip in, center the brood nest, and then skip one frame over and up a little bit, and you put the second one in. And they just slip right over the frame and right down in there. And that's it. And I probably should have put that one further up, but either way, they're in the center of the nest. And then you put the next box back on and do the same in the top. That's really what I was doing the whole time. Um, they are really slimy. I did notice the apigard was much easier 
doing a half dose and uh and you'll see that in a little bit i do get audio back the old 20 dollars mic comes through for me so here we're going to put the top strip in honestly i look back in this i probably should have put two in um but i think they'll be fine the top box you can see the newer frames on the outsides they were just mainly honey and not loaded with a lot of bees uh, so I think I'll be alright with this. Now I'm wiping all the grime off my hands so I can handle everything. But hopefully it's effective. And again, Randy Oliver showed it to be a good summer treatment from what I read. And that's why I kind of jumped on it. So Bees are looking good in there. Right here I'm putting in a spacer to vent it. It said to kind of vent it without an inner cover. I went back and put the inner covers in because that didn't make any sense to me. Uh, I can get just as good a ventilation with the inner cover. And I don't run that many. So that's me explaining all that. So we're going to go ahead and clip to the next video where I think audio comes back. Never mind, let's not do that. Actually, I need to show you what the mic count was on the hive next door while these were sitting in the solution. And here we go. Let's take a look at what the count was. As I look at that right there, how many mites do we see? We see six mites. Uh, not terrible. Threshold in the paperwork that we see here in Louisiana. Um on the uh, apiary site or the apiary inspector site uh, division of forestry horticultural quarantine programs division is a three percent so six is not quite three percent we're sitting at about two maybe so that's not bad nine is the max you want to see of course we want to see a lot less than that so this will be a good one to see if we can knock them back with this hop guard three um be interesting to see so Let's go on it and move to the next clip and see what we got. So we're under here, under the trees. I've got this board I've got from Hillco. It's a plastic bottom board. I really wanted to try it, see what it would do. Uh, it's got like a built-in ventilation screen slash mouse guard slash entrance reducer. I hate to do this, they're small, but they're telling me to take this and open these entrances with hop guards, so it's stuck good. I'm gonna need my hive tool. I'm gonna need to. There we go. Open this entrance. You take this all the way out and it's wide open. You close it part of the way. Uh, it's gonna soon incorporate a pollen trap when he develops it more. So these will be the drone. There's two of them on each side for the drones. But we're gonna open it up not leave it on this was a nuke I moved last minute into a 10 frame and I closed the entrance because there was robbing going on so so if you pull it all the way out flip it upside down put it in from this side now you've got ventilation and you can move the colony it's got a built-in screen board with a tray um, thing is let's see if there's mic drop on this uh, they're gonna be able to you're gonna be able to screw in a solid cover soon and again, I'm not going to wash every column. I'm not going to wash this one. I just wanted to show you that neat little board. I'm going to pull this out for now. I'll go around and pick all these up later. But uh, but I tell you, th this stuff stinks. Um, I did look up the active ingredient. I said hops. So what it is, it's called the, the potassium salts of the hops beta acid. So it's, it's, uh, it's salt of some sort. And that's why I'm wearing nitriles. I do not like nitro gloves. I just can never get used to them. And I don't like when I'm sweating inside them. So this was a little nuke. They should have loaded up their stores. This is just one we have to watch for winter stores and summer dearth stores. Again, I'm making notes of who's got a lot and who doesn't. I'm going to open these ladies up. Uh, of course, check the lid. Just again, checking queen, right? That's all I'm going to do. Checking stores. Not a lot of stores. There's a little, oh wow, look at that brood. This is a little nuke. It was one I raised. I grafted. And... I grafted this queen. It was going to be for sale, but wasn't ready in time, so I left her. And she really grew fast. I had to put her in this thing. Wow, plenty of fresh larvae. I didn't mark in my queens this year. I'm going to mark in my book who's who. I should have. I thought about going through today and doing it, but you know, it's just it's time consuming. I really just want to check if they're queen right and move on and get them treated. This is going to have 10 frames of bees and brood, so we're going to put two strips in this one. I see eggs. I'm good. That's all we need to see. They're queen right. That's all we want. They're going through winter in a nine frame. I'll check their weight periodically. These may end up getting feed. We got a feeder lid on top, no problem. There. 
they're pretty light actually so so we'll go uh, center of the brood nest it's about right here if any of you guys have used these with success please let me know in the comments what you think I told you I was gonna have a uh, a treatment that nobody really talks about much in one video I told you that'd be a surprise and this is your surprise it's hop guard three all right moving on all right guys still hard at it we got a water break real quick um finished up this stand over here man they were mean I opened up a nuke well it wasn't a nuke it was one that was put into a nuke it was a nuke put into a 10 frame <laughs> man they got mad they got nasty and then I got into the double stack this double stack uh, this double deep and they got ugly too but uh, put them all back together put the treatments in you can tell the bees don't like the smell of this stuff they're blowing out the all the vents but as you can see they've calmed down man they were really getting after me I did a mite wash on this one I wanted to see what it was this was a cutout I did a few years back but it's been combined several times but with that mite wash had one mite so that's pretty good I treated them anyway uh, the, the reason why well I'm gonna treat the whole yard um, because if I have one that I don't treat maybe I I don't know maybe I collected the sample wrong maybe they go and rob a feral colony who knows what they do go over and rob the neighbors if they die or something we we run into a issue of a mite bomb as they call it basically they pick up a bunch of mites so I want to knock them back um, yeah it's cost me but just treat the whole yard as one colony I think is how I feel about it uh, the only reason I am checking is to see the efficacy so what had happened was I pulled the bees off they were so to, they're just defensive sort of like bruises they weren't like they were I mean I was getting stung just now and through the thing but they were just being very defensive because as you can see they've calmed down but it was so bad out for a little bit I was like man let me get this thing put back together so I I really double checked triple checked the frame knocked them in the box got the sample put it in and set the cup to the side just figuring look I'm gonna find six eight ten mites put the thing back together with the strips in it well guess what no mites but one but hey one is enough we'll treat them let's uh let's move on everybody's got strips now so we're gonna move on that that colony there got nasty but boy what a good looking queen man they got some good looking brood pattern in there but uh so far queen right across the board happy about that not worried about that one but it, it it was queen right when i got down to it all right i'm gonna move on dump these bees move to the next got a couple i'm gonna put apa guard in and i'll check those as well just want to see what uh again checking efficacy of the treatment not really i don't care to know what the counts are necessarily because every year i run through the whole thing with uh, my um uh, oxalic acid so it's not like I'm not going to treat them you just don't know and I'm only doing random samples one right next to it might have 30 mites in it you know so that's why uh, even though you know it showed one I still want to do it because what if the one dies what if the mite load gets high enough the viruses are vectored and then we have a, a die off from a virus they go in and rob it while the bees are still halfway alive it's over you just got another one with mites so that's why I just treat the whole yard as one and uh it was gonna get treated anyway all right moving on all right guys another check for the queen on a frame it's got some open brood that's what's worrisome is yeah <laughs> gotta be careful you're wanting the sealed and open brood with nurse bees and the frame next to it at least and of course that's where your queen could very well be especially if you ran it with any smoke so I'm double checking I'll put them in here and let them walk around So this one I'm checking it because I'm going to use Apigard on this one. And I'll tell you my rationale for trying this experiment. All the flying bees look to be gone. So let's put them in the solution. Get our half cup. So I'm going to go get a shim. I'm going to need a shim for this. My rationale on this, I'm in the shade. It is hot in the sun. My rationale is that that thing had slabs of brood the top was full of honey I'm finding that with a lot of these boxes that the 
the uh, top deeps you know shortage of supers and everything they filled the top deeps and that's fine that's a good winter setup that's a good setup for no feeding for dearth everything so they had she had slabs of brood in there in the bottom box so there's plenty of bees because the apigard is going to shut her down um so i didn't want to do it on a queen that was just coming back say from a summer swarm you know um i got one over there she just started laying not the not the place to put the apigard because i need them to brood up in this little bit of dearth the brood is coming in they're not going to brood up big because i don't feed them and you know they're already going to be set behind so I want to use the Apigard on something that's strong. I'm trying this Apigard. Directions tell you 105 degrees for a full 50 gram dose. And nobody says that works. Everybody says that pushes them out of the hive. So, I'm going to use half a dose, 25. Put it on a playing card. I bought some playing cards. Um, I'll put half the dose on this and leave the other half in the tray. These are rated for... Um, ages three and up so i'm good they had some spider-man ones where the box was broke open so i'll put this in there i'm gonna go get a shim put it on there we're gonna do half the dose in there and that apigard doesn't say anything about venting the hive i think you want the thymol in there with that so uh the other thing says to vent the hive and i'm doing it but ooh, they don't like it when you put it in there either they do not like that hop guard i want to see how it works in this heat though apigard seems like a very effective um tool to use but I just hear so many things about the heat but it's been around a while and people are using it and uh, Craig Branch from Sideline Beekeeper Craig, Bra Craig Branch he's the one that sent me these and he used it and he used uh, the gel in the bucket just fine same stuff but uh, we're gonna go with it uh, out here at the Southeast Louisiana Bee Yard all right guys let's get this on here this box is full of honey on top but this is where it needs to go I'm gonna put a shim on it it is a vintage gym. It's got two holes with screen, um, so no robbing can get done. I'm going to use, let's use a raccoon, not an armadillo. Let's use a raccoon. I'm going to put it right here. That's about, about, yeah, that's about half of it. And we'll come back. All right, time all. That don't look like a lot. That's half that little thing, so I don't know. Seems like them fellas use them syringes. Have a lot more than that on there. Oh well, half a dose. That's what we're calling it. So you're probably saying, Mike, did you even do a mite count before you put it in there? Sure I did. I was gonna treat it anyway. So Apigard is going on number seven. And the mites in this, I already checked. See it? Oh uh, yeah. Nothing's changed. They've sat for a while. I got four. Hope you can see it. There's four in there. Oh, the sun just went behind the cloud. Perfect. So four mites. Still below the threshold. Every, all three have been below the threshold. Even the one, whatever it had, it was just below the threshold. It was at a 2% instead of three. Which is good, but we want zero if we can help it. But we'll never get that in my yard just because of my regime and how I keep my bees. But if we can knock them down and then get the oxalic acid to them for winter, we're doing a whole lot better. So, all right, I'm going to finish those three on that stand and keep on moving. Well, folks, just doing another voiceover real quick. I was just showing you in this scene um, the strength of the colonies that I'm seeing. They're all pretty much the same. And what I'm pointing to over here is uh, number 13 and 14. They were kind of sketchy out of all of them. Um, but for the most part, what I was seeing was some really good-looking numbers on all these colonies. And they were queen right. The one on the left I'm pointing to actually was a queenless one that I introduced a queen to last week. Don't look like she was accepted, but I'm going to give them a few more days. They were calm, um, but those two right there, just kind of sketchy. 
um, out of all that seam, plus the one way down on the right side here where that box is standing up, that pollen trap. I took that out. That's number 20 to the right. It's somewhat sketchy as well, although the numbers were good. And then the one just to the left of that, their numbers look great, but the queen just didn't look that good. So she'll be requeened in the spring. Other than that, most of them are looking about like this. Um, maybe a little weaker on some, but uh, for the most part, the bees look good. So really happy that we were seeing a lot of queen right hives, all of them queen right, and good numbers. So very pleased. Well, good evening, folks. That's right, good evening the next day. Yeah, as you can see, we had some audio issues. The old microphone gets beat down so bad. So I figured I'd do a closing since I had to voice over some stuff. Hated that happen. Apologies for that. Uh, but you didn't miss much but me talking. So that's what I'll do now real quick. It's just kind of kind of summarize what I did yesterday and what went on. I'm out here taking a walk through the bee yard. Uh, I've been walking around. It's a nice evening. It's probably in the mid 80s and the sun's down. There's a little breeze. So just a nice day to go walk through and take a look at the bees. After I put the treatments on, that one got the uh, ape guard. And they're not bearding at all hardly. So thymol's not running them out. Boy, that... Uh, that hop guard smells, huh. That seemed to uh, push them out more than anything, but everybody seems to be doing okay. So what I found yesterday, first and foremost, we were queen right, queen right across the board. Very excited about that. I did have one that I knew was queenless. It was queenless a few weeks ago, so a couple weeks ago, whenever weeks ago. Bottom line is it was queenless. It did not accept the mated queen I put in last week that I could tell. It's only been five days when I went through, but I didn't see a sign of her. And, uh, you know, if you don't see eggs in five days, that's okay. A little unusual, but it's okay. Um, but to not see her at all in a, basically five frames worth of bees, that was a little disheartening, but we'll see. So that queenless colony, it was one of the six on this property that was a summer swarm. And out of those six, five requeened, that one didn't. Very good odds for me. So it was a long day yesterday, but it was a good day and a productive day. We got to assess everybody, and like I said, outside of the one I knew was queenless from a summer swarm, everybody else had queens. Everybody else had laying queens with brood present. Capped, uncapped larvae, eggs, milk brood, everything. So that was good. And we're going to try this. Now we're going to see how this hop guard does. Hope it doesn't harm any queens. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be pretty gentle when it comes to that. Pretty good in and, and it's temperate for this kind of heat so it should be all right we're going to check the efficacy we did see our mite counts we saw what six then one over there and then four in the other one so my counts weren't off the charts at all 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 those all within the threshold for sure um within what they write out of the um our, our apiary department whatever it's in the horticulture department nonetheless all within the three percent two of them well within three percent so that was promising you know those are just random random samplings but uh, hey we'll see what happens hopefully this stuff works good i was super excited to see the numbers i was seeing all the hives had honey in the top so here we go with the feeding not fe i don't feed during the dearth i leave plenty of honey for them but one light hive that i've got so much honey in the tops of these deeps all i gotta do is pull a frame or two out and put it in there if i'm concerned about it but there is a slight little bit of a nectar flow going. As far as the bees being mean, I got my butt tore up yesterday. I got stung on how many times in the back and shoulders and all that out of three different colonies. That was it. Out of about 35 or so that we looked out here, only three of them, three or four of them were really defensive. And while they were defensive, once I got the lids back on them and everything put back together, within 10 minutes, they, you could walk right up to them just like I am now. Ah, there was that one bee that would still come out. That one young guard bee trying to prove herself to the colony, you know, just has to come out and bug you. But we got our, our treatments administered and we're done with this yard. I got to go in town and do those seven that are left out there. Hopefully we're treated and ready to roll, guys. I appreciate all y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, apologies for the sound problems. If you did like it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you don't mind, of course. Like I always say, this is Barry's Best Hunting. I'm Mike, and I did bees yesterday. Cut grass today. <laughs> y'all have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.